Challenger, go with throttle up. The Space Shuttle Challenger is destroyed just a little more than one minute after liftoff. Minute 15 seconds, velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical All miles. seven Down astronauts seven on board are killed. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tonight, reporting from Washington. It is the worst disaster in the history of the American space program, and President Reagan has declared a week of mourning for the seven astronauts five men and two women who lost their lives on their way into space this morning. Now we know that many of you have heard the news many hours ago and may even have seen some of our extended coverage this afternoon. But many others of you, we surmise, have been at work and thus we're going to spend virtually our entire broadcast this evening on what is not only a crushingly sad day for families, friends and colleagues of the astronauts, but also an enormous shock to the manned space program, which before today had gone so well. Never before have American lives been lost in flight. We will try to answer many of your questions, but as of this evening, many questions remain unanswered. We begin at Cape Canaveral with ABC's John Quinones. They gathered for what turned out to be their last meal at 6.48 this morning, the ceremonial breakfast. For months, they had trained together. Astronaut Ellison Onizuka from Hawaii, the star of this mission, New Hampshire school teacher Krista McAuliffe, Mission Commander Dick Scobie, Pilot Michael Smith, Astronauts Judith Resnick and Ronald McNair, and Payload Specialist Gregory Jarvis. After three days of delays, they appeared tired, but quickly rejuvenated by applause as they headed for the launch pad. Scobie followed by Mission Specialist uh, G. Resnick, Ron McNair, and uh, Pilot Mike Smith, followed by Krista McAuliffe, Teacher in Space. Uh, Ellison Onizuka and payload specialist Greg Jarvis. Final preparations before liftoff. The ground crew gives McAuliffe an apple, an apple for the teacher and wishes of good luck. Initially, liftoff was scheduled for 9.38 this morning, but again there were problems. A hard freeze overnight left ice on the launch pad, a two-hour delay. And then NASA discovers a faulty fire detector on board the shuttle, another hour's delay while it's replaced. Finally, the liftoff was set for 11.38. A crowd of some 500 spectators, including 18 visiting school children from McAuliffe's hometown of Concord, New Hampshire, waited anxiously and then counted down. The liftoff appeared flawless. The spectators, including Krista McAuliffe's parents, Grace and Edward Corrigan, watched proudly through tears of joy. 65 seconds into flight, NASA Control orders Commander Scobie to go to full power. Challenger, go with throttle up. Challenger, go with throttle up. Suddenly, an explosion. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. NASA loses all communication with Challenger, but the crowd still does not realize that something's gone wrong. Within seconds, Challenger disintegrates. We have a report from the flight dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. For the spectators and Krista McAuliffe's parents, joy turns to confusion, worry, and a realization of tragedy. The $1.2 billion spaceship, its seven crew members, and their satellite payload disappear. I thought the flight was going fine. And then I heard them say, major malfunction. And then the person beside me said, it's exploded. And it was, I couldn't speak. It was. Within minutes, emergency rescue teams parachuted in, converging on a search area 18 miles east of Cape Canaveral. Uh, debris continued to fall uh, for 50 minutes and more, and obviously you can't send aircraft and uh, ships into an area where debris is falling, where they, may, they themselves may be endangered. Late this afternoon, after six hours of searching, NASA reports they found no survivors. These searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. Tonight, NASA and Cape Canaveral are in mourning.
Tonight at Cape Canaveral, Vice President George Bush, accompanied by Senators Jake Garn and John Glenn, both former astronauts, expressed the nation's condolences to the families of the astronauts. Bush had a special message for American schoolchildren. You must try to understand that spirit, bravery, and commitment are what make not only the space program, but all of life worthwhile. We must never, as people in our daily lives or as a nation, stop exploring, stop hoping, stop discovering. We must press on. John Quinones, ABC News, Cape Canaveral.